What's going on YouTube folks out there, Facebook friends? My name is Ademir and this is the Hard Black Truth. And I just got done listening to Jason Black's uh, live broadcast. Well, actually, this was hours ago. It's actually 2.30 in the morning. I had the opportunity to hear his broadcast. If he does repost it, I will make sure that the link is in the description. For anybody who may have been on the fringe about Kamala Harris, I believe that the broadcast, the information within that broadcast, you, you have no reason to be talking about voting for Kamala Harris. She is not for black people. As a matter of fact, she would be a detriment to black people. Now, there were folks that were definitely on it and were vocal about not voting for this woman. And uh, that came in the likes of Professor Black Truth and Tariq Nasheed, who has been catching a lot of flack on Twitter and other social media forums. And what the dominant white supremacist society immediately did is they sent out their shills, their political tokens. You have here a tweet from Bakari Sellout, excuse me, Sellers. Uh, and you see exactly what he says. The misogyny Kamala Harris is going to be on the receiving end of from black men. This cycle is going to be something to behold. It's sad, but expected. Now, he posted that three days ago. Not long after she announced her bid for presidency, uh, shortly after it became clear that both black men and women were going in on Kamala because of her record. But this is what the dominant society does. They use their power to change the narrative. So it isn't that people are talking about her record. It's that black men hate black women and their misogyny or whatever the hell they want to call it. Right. They change the narrative to fit what it is that they want to push. And I can tell you that Bakari knows better. He knows better than what he's saying. And I will prove it to you here shortly. Right. But it was amazing because he posted that. Uh, and then you had a young lady decide that she was going to go in and, and, and say her own thing. Right. Uh, and I didn't even realize who I was going back and forth with online. Uh, but this is Monique Presley, y'all. This is the, the former attorney of Bill Cosby. And I, I have to say, I, I was highly disappointed because I really respected this woman just just from watching her performance on television as she defended and articulated uh, in defense for Bill Cosby. I, I really respected this woman's ability to articulate herself. Right. But truly, she's on some other stuff, too. And you can see she says the solidarity with which black women will render clapbacks heard around the world to every black man that tries it will also be something to behold. So you can see clear as day that their narrative that they're pushing is gender warring. So it isn't that black people are, are questioning Kamala Harris uh, on the merits of her record. It's simply that black men can't stand black women and it's misogynoir. And, you know, the only reason I ended up going back and forth with her is because of my response that you see down there. And, and you know, I go in on rolling and I'm, I'm saying, yo, you got be be a man, yo, be black first. You understand what I'm saying? Like she's she's not behaving any. She, she didn't behave any differently from any of the white D.A.s uh, around this country. Right. And Roland didn't really respond immediately. Monique did. And she questioned what it was. That, that I was saying when I when I told him to be black first and we went back and forth a little bit. And, you know, I pointed out the fact that when given the opportunity, Roland Martin said that he wasn't a black man. He said he was a man. I'm a Christian man. I'm a Christian man. I'm a man. So and, and that's when he was talking with Richard Spencer. And that must have triggered him because he finally responded and you see what he said you know this is such bullshit i know how to debate i know how to cut someone off at the pass you idiots are clueless and, <laughs> and, and that's where we are you have the likes of roland martin uh bakari sellout and others and jason black went in on all of them right it's like it, it's amazing when you see things work the way they do 
you have a dominant white supremacist society that uses their media as a weapon against black people. But then you have the new black media. You have, I, I have to say, shout out to Tariq Nasheed, shout out to Professor Black Truth, shout out to Jason Black, because these brothers have been on it the whole time. We have other folks out there like Antonio Moore trying to G check Tariq, talking about it's not about her hair. Tariq merely pointed out the fact that this woman, who who we've never known for listening to rap music or anything like that, she doesn't come out on black issues. Every now and then she gets a zinger in on the Trump administration. She's been doing that for the past several years, and that's why people know about her. I guess that's why she felt uh, bold enough to decide, I'm going to run for president now, right? But she doesn't have any street credibility. And Tariq merely pointed out the fact that you know, this woman who wears her hair down, tied it back all of a sudden, showing her ethnic edges is the comment he made. And, and she's out there uh, uh, dancing off beat to, to Cardi B. And that set everyone off to the point that you had, uh, I, I was going to say Joe Biden, excuse me, Michael Dean or Howard Dean, Mr. Yeah, Mr. He lost his bid for presidency just by being too excited. Yeah. But he actually told Tariq Nasheed to shut the fuck up. Right? <laughs> All of the folks have come out the woodworks to try to make this about something else. Oh, they're trying to say she's not black enough. Oh, this is misogyny. Oh, it's this, that, and th No, it has nothing to do with that. It's the fact that this woman, when given the chance to perform... And when given a chance to be black first or to be pro black or to just even look out for black people, she did anything but that. Right. That that's that's all it was. That's all it was at the end of the day. And Bakari Sellers knows better because he's sitting there talking about the misogyny that Kamala Harris is going through. But, you know, now that he's now that he's getting pushed back. And now that it's clear uh, by everybody that, you know, black folks, not just black men, black folks in general aren't buying into Kamala Harris and the fact that she's been pandering. I mean, you made your announcement that you were going to run for president on Martin Luther King Day. You used Martin Luther King's holiday to announce your 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 bid for for president of the United States of America. Then you're out here talking about how you wear Converse. Then you're out here listening to Cardi B, right? You, then, then they're reposting old videos of her saying Wakanda forever. And that was from 2018. They knew that they wanted this woman to run, but they also knew that they didn't have any street credibility from her. She doesn't connect or resonate with black society. And he knows that. And, and I'll prove it to you because... Shortly after, or maybe a few days after, I don't know who Tal Copan is, but she's quoting him. And he says, no longer are people able to parachute into a fish fry or go to church and think they're going to win the black vote, said former South Carolina state representative Bakari Sellers. Now, that sounds like a totally different thing from the misogyny Kamala Harris is going to. You see what I'm saying? So they know better. They totally know better. But again, dominant society, they use their media as a weapon. And I'm going to wrap this up real quick by pointing out to you that shortly after Jason Black did that broadcast excoriating her on her record, Fox News and other news outlets are now running a story. Again, this is around it's 244 now. But in the morning, shortly after he posted that video, this was shortly just after 12 a.m. They're now trying to show this story of extramarital affairs with Kamala Harris, former San Francisco mayor, this 84 year old old ass man admitting to having an affair with Kamala Harris. And you got folks online talking about her sleeping her way up to the top. And while the narrative should be. And while the narrative is that's coming from new black media is that her record is atrocious when it comes to black people. They've gone ahead and doubled down on trying to push this narrative of misogyny. 
Now we're going to have conversations about how she's sleeping around to get promoted. And what the hell does this have to do with, with anything except for the fact that you have a black male who's trying to put her down with some with with a sex scandal. And now that's going to be the conversation that they're going to attempt to have pushed around. And that's going to be the narrative that they're talking about anything but what new black media is talking about. And it's amazing how they work. I just felt a need to point that out to you. So guys, pay attention to what's going on. I said all of that just to get to this point right here. Pay attention to what's going on and don't let yourself be distracted because it isn't misogyny. It isn't that we care about who she slept with. It isn't that 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 she isn't black enough. It's the fact that when she had the opportunity to perform in the service for black people, she decided that she wasn't going to act any differently from any of the white males that are in these positions of power. As a matter of fact, one could argue she acted even worse. I mean, she was out there literally advocating for slavery. When you really break it down, this woman is a detriment to black society. And we would do well to make sure that she does not go into 2019 thinking that, you know, she is a viable candidate. That's all I got to say. You guys let me know how you feel about everything. Lung Yao One here. Peace.